Hey YouTube, uh, it's another weekend and I finally got time to get back into uh, making this video. Um, this is again a continuation of the um, Karambit series I'm making and uh, today we're going to be covering some um, what I call Karambit style knives. Uh, why I put that definition is basically um, they're not traditional karambits in the sense that um, it has the typical hawk bill or maybe even sheep's foot type of blade style along with the retention ring. Um, it's actually, as you can see already here, um, some may have the more traditional sort of forward facing type blade. But I call it karambit style knives because um, these are made to sort of be used using the same techniques or style um, as a karambit. Because you can see here they're built with uh, the retention ring. So you can still hold it, you know, with uh, a standard, you know, reverse grip as you would for a karambit and use most of the, you know, locking um, slashing, tearing type, well, not so much the tearing, but the slashing type of motion you would with a traditional karambit. But um, one of the more sort of common um, criticisms of a karambit is because of the curve shaped blade, when you're holding it in a reverse grip, um, you can't really stab with it. It's not a, a stabbing weapon because um, if you look at a uh, karambit and let me pull out the Ranger EOD here okay so this is more built around you know sort of the style of a, a traditional uh, karambit right so it has the hawksbill style blade and if I'm holding in a reverse grip it won't actually um, when you're stabbing sort of in like either a forward or even a more common downward motion sort of the um, what they call the ice pick grip stabbing you notice um when i'm even pushing on my surface here it, uh, the mat it's not actually penetrating it's just kind of touching against it sure you know i can immediately either angle to stab or but then uh arguably the with my wrist in this position it won't actually have enough force to you know do a you know good damage if it was a harder surface or whatnot um compared to some of these knives, um, I'll, I'll use this one. Um, you can see here, it, you, you have an actual good point of pressure and when you actually pull, you know, and go in a downward motion or in a forward motion when you're going against an assailant. So that's sort of why, you know, these type of knives, you know, became common in design. Um, it's more of a traditional knife, but with a retention ring so that you can see you know that you could still use many of the um this one's a more unique style blade it's sort of a reverse um i think they, they call this a trailing point type of blade um and you see here in a pocket version as well but you know it actually facilitates for better um slashing motion similar to um you know uh you know a chef's knife cutting kind of if you would consider that um but it also still facilitates for you know adequate penetration when you're doing a stabbing motion so these are the uh, karambit style knives um definitely has advantages especially if you're just using it you know in a forward grip uh, karambit in a forward grip um arguably isn't uh, as effective um it's most of the techniques built around it isn't designed to so if i'm holding in a forward grip um uh, maybe for utility use you can see that you know i could still probably like shave wood or whatnot with it but as a you know sort of weapon um the range isn't great with the hawk still ha hawk bill style blade and it's just not as effective as you would say you know a knife like this where you know a ford grip i could do utility work still with this but i could also do more common you know stabbing type motions if I'm you know trying to defend myself against an assailant so that's sort of where these type of knives um, uh, has gained popularity and um, is um, the I guess purpose of the design um, while Kali and um, Silat style you know techniques can still be used with them so 
most of these you can feel the um, it's quite comfortable in the hand yet you can still have a retention ring you can still sort of use the retention ring as a um, impact type of weapon but it also you know you can still hold it in a forward grip and it has the utility use as well as you know forward stabbing motion or slashing and whatnot so all right so i'm going to introduce three fixed knives here uh, these are fixed blade knives and then two folding action so these are both uh liner locks okay um let's start with this one since it's closest to me this is the tops um they call it the CUT, Combat Utility Tool, uh, 4.0 version. Um, and this one is called the uh, Blackout Edition because um, it's, you know, in all full black. Uh, there is a uh, prior version with more like a coyote brown type of a grip. Um, so it has a drop point type style blade, which is more common with, you know, um, your type of uh, EDC carry or utility type knife. Um, it is uh, common with most uh, tops um, blades, uh, 1095, so high carbon steel, um, but it's also coated. So to prevent uh, corrosion, they have what they call the black traction coating. Um, so it's a nice, good, you know, scratch proof type of surface. So yet you have the 1095 steel, which is, you know, relatively easy to sharpen and it actually holds a good edge and uh, most importantly 1095 because of the high carbon content um, it's tough so it can you know take some serious abuse um, nice design so it has the as I mentioned the retention ring it's quite thick full tanged with um, g10 handles and um, comes with its own kydex sheath uh, as with most tops uh, type knives so excellent uh, in terms of if you were to uh, take this uh, you know as a carry it across your belt or whatnot and as a defensive tool um, this one's a little bit heavy though uh, it's about 6.3 ounces so you know day-to-day -day carry might not be ideal but definitely uh, what I would probably use this is, you know, um, have it along with your bug out bag or whatnot. Um, and, you know, a great knife to have and to use in a bind. Definitely first defensive situations, but also you can sort of, you can see how thick the blade is. So you can actually use it for some utility use. Um, so quite good. This one is an interesting little one. Um, it's a Smith & Wesson. Um, they call it the SW995 model. Um, it has what I call the sort of like a trailing point. So it's kind of sweeps forward and um, reminds me of sort of like those, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? The East, uh, Middle East type blades, the scimitars. So it has a little bit of curvature. So uh, we know from that type of like, you know, sword, um, you know, uh, a slicing action is very, you know, effective with this type of uh, blade design. Um, full tan construction. It's got jimping here and here. So, you know, for when you're actually using a reverse grip, there's some jimping to help with your grip. Uh, but you can also use it in a forward grip. And... Um, it's quite nice, actually. Uh, very light. Um, this one's about 3.8 ounces. Um, these are with uh, fiberglass reinforced uh, nylon, so FRN type uh, handles. Um, feels good in the hand. Um, yeah, so quite good. And it comes with its own little sheath here. Um, you can attach it to a chain for uh, sort of a neck knife um, or, you know, add a, additional attachments like the utility clip for belt carry as well. Okay. This one's a cool little one um, that I recently picked up. Um, you can notice that the uh, retention ring isn't actually a ring. It's more of like a, reminds me of the, like the trigger guard of a gun. 
but it's still you can use it effectively using karambit style type of um, you know techniques uh, it flows quite well oops sorry didn't mean to hit the camera a little bit um, this one is actually a k-bar um, it's called the k-bar pocket strike uh, model number 2491 um, made in Taiwan though it's interesting um, uses k bars uh 1095 so high carbon they call it the crovan steel so i guess they added uh some elements of uh like vanadium and whatnot so um makes the uh, steel a little bit more corrosion resistant or durable um it's back coated of course so it prevents rust um overall um it's an interesting type of blade um shorter blade length compared to like say the tops um but eh, i think it, it has enough blade to do its work basically and then uh the sheath is really interesting uh this thing's called a pocket strike i guess it's designed for like deep carry so deep pocket carry um, you can actually, if, you, if your pockets are deep enough, basically fit this whole thing. The clip is up to here, so you would actually fit it into your pocket from like here. So you only have this much sticking out. And the impression is also that part of the design of the retention ring is sort of as a means to extract the blade from the sheath. Um, and you can see here it's reversible clip, so you can carry it on your left or right hand side. Um, quite interesting and it also has uh, holes for fastening to like other gear uh, it's an interesting design um, overall not a bad knife all right moving on to some of the um, folding design this one is the Bastinelli creations they call it the Mako after the shark um, and you can kind of see uh, here it has the G10 handles sort of with these um, portions that are like engraved in there to resemble sort of like a shark. I mean, these are like supposed to be the shark gills. And um, the overall design of it is similar to like a shark if you actually have it open. So, so you know, kind of like dorsal fin with the shark's head, you know, sort of pointed. Um, retention ring. Um, I really like the wire type of clip design. Uh, it's not as intrusive or damaging to your clothing. Um, okay, you see here. So, uh, Fox is usually Italian made. Um, the steel is, uh, the, it's actually, um, N690CO. So it's a sort of a European style, um, or uh, established type of um, steel. Um, so it's kind of like a cobalt stainless steel, um, very similar to like the VG10 or uh, 154CM steel. Um, good corrosion re resistance, good hardness and edge retention, um, just overall toughness, maybe not as strong as like the um, the carbon, high carbon steels like the 1095, but uh, definitely adequate for, you know, EDC and, you know, defensive use, definitely. Um, this one is actually also a collaboration. So um, you can see, I don't know if I can get the camera to focus as close, but um, it actually says um, Doug Markaida and Bastinelli Brothers. So um, this is a collaboration. So it's a part of this design, um, the renowned uh, knife fighter, uh, sort of knife expert, uh, Doug Markaida, helped in the design of this knife. And um, you see here, so you can still do stabbing motions, but nice slashing motions, but also most of the standard uh, karambit style techniques you'd still be able to do with this little folding knife. And this is actually the... Uh, the Bramp, the Bram Frank uh, kinetic opening style ramp. So actually it can fast open from your pocket. Um, now I'll, I'll include a, a quick short video uh, drawing from pocket you know, to show how quickly this thing just, it snaps open. It's, it's faster than a switchblade basically. Um, great design, 
really like this um, knife. So it's a liner lock. And you can see here, really good design overall. Very light too. Um, this one's a 2.6 ounces. Um, so quite good. All right. And then last but definitely not least, um, we have a Fox. Uh, this one's a 597 Dart XT. Um, has the Emerson Wave. So you can see the little hook. So it also can fast open from your pocket. But this one has a Tonto style blade. So. See, there's their Emerson patent for the Wave. And then it says the Dart XT. Um, and this one's actually also a Doug Markaida uh, collaboration. So it actually says by D Markaida here. Um, feels great in the hand. Um, G10 handles, uh, made in Italy from Fox. So Fox knives made in Italy. You can see, uh, let me see if I can get a closer. Yeah. Sorry. My camera doesn't quite focus as well. Um, but, um, the XT is, uh, has two additional features, uh, in addition to the standard, I guess, 597 dart. Um, one of which is the glass breaker here. So you can actually, uh, while you're in holding it in a closed grip, you can still use the impact tool, uh, sorry, the, use the retention ring as an impact weapon, but also you can use this in a hammer fist style, you know, with the glass breaker and uh, can cause some serious damage. And of course, use it in a utility sense of breaking glass. Um, also another feature of the XT is the additional locking mechanism here. So it holds, it holds the liner lock in place. So now I can't see, I can't close this. It's basically locked in place. So it's, you know, really solid as a blade, um, almost like a fixed blade, basically good grip. It feels great in the hand, um, with the Tonto dip, definitely as I demonstrated, see, look, you can do stabbing motions what with a reverse grip um not as good in terms of like the forward slashing motions uh with the tanto but uh not as good as the like the mako sweeping design but you know definitely if you've used a, a tanto style blade um yeah it will still cut if you just you know. and of course if it's sharp enough it will definitely do its damage okay and then I'll do the lock and you can see here, it closes just fine. So uh, these are what I consider karambit style knives. And um, they're great. Um, definitely great style weapons um, with its advantages. Uh, and uh, you can, I guess if you want a well-rounded type of knife, um, these are great uh, sort of middle ground type of selection um and with like something you know if it's if you're willing to carry the weight you know something like this you can use it in a utility sense as well as a self-defense you know tactical sense as well so great knives overall uh, i really like these um all right um as always uh please feel free to leave comments uh raise questions or whatnot um uh my last video for the Karambit series it will be coming out uh, probably by tomorrow. And then that will be the last one of this series. Uh, I'll be moving on to some other um, topics. Uh, I plan on actually making an updated um, everyday carry uh, video since my brother recently posted one. And yeah, my, my EDC has changed over the years as well. Um, and then uh, we might actually do one uh, similar, like a series for, um, you know, reviews of multi-tools. Because um, the uh, Swiss Army knife video that I did was quite popular. And sort of, um, you know, one of the other things that, you know, another bladed thing is, of course, a multi-tool. So um, I have several uh, through the years uh, compiled quite a bit of Leathermans. So 
maybe uh, we'll start to do a series on the multi tools as well. Um, but um, definitely comment, uh, send us questions, uh, maybe suggestions in terms of what you'd like to see, and then uh, we'll, we'll work on it. Um, as always, thank you for your support. Um, like and subscribe our videos, and we'll continue to make them. All right, have a good one. Bye.